We underlined in our preamble that uh, a single currency presents uh, 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 an enormous prospect for Africa. And of course, if Africa can uh, adopt uh, this uh, integrated uh, monetary union, it will face leave the, the economies of African countries. Let's look at uh, uh, this dreamer has been, the, the African Union has been talking about this. So what is actually impeding stakeholders from putting into place uh, this very important thing, the single uh, currency in Africa. Thank you so much, Clarice. I truly enjoyed this conversation on um, the earlier speaker. Um, not putting the cart before the horse. I think um, African single currency. And it's also very interesting that uh, he historicized where we're coming from. Um, particularly since uh, countries started experiencing waves of independence in the 1960s. But um, I am an optimist, but on this particular one, I would say to a large extent, it's just going to remain in the pipe dream for the following reasons. Um, I think uh, currency is just the second issue. Unifying the currency, having a single currency is going to be the second issue. The number one thing is that uh, how integrated are we as a continent? And I'm going to give you two examples. And um, earlier this year, January and February, I was supposed to go to Cameroon, go to Gabon, go to Equatoria, Guinea, and then go to Sao Tome and Principe. They were all in Central Africa. It was like going through, I don't know how to describe it for the, for, for the, for the lack of better words. On a not, in a nutshell, I couldn't enter Equatoria again, despite the fact that I booked my flight and everything. And it, it, it speaks to the issue of uh, the ease with which passport documents, I mean, visa documents to move around, around the continent is. So if you have not been able to do that, how are you now going to be able to now solve the issue of a single currency? So it, it, it a very, it's a very dicey situation in that regard. And then the second thing is the fact that um, it's not easy for anyone living in, in, in Ghana now to work in Nigeria. It is not easy for anyone working in, living in Lagos to work in Togo. Because one of the key issues to integration is uh, ease of movement. And the starting point in this regard is your rail system. Even within our continent, within our countries, how efficient is our rail system? So to the extent to which somebody living in, in Calabar cannot easily move to Duhala or move to Yahunde, it becomes a very difficult thing because single currency is about economy, it's about business. I was in Europe, I think, about two or three years ago, and it's very good that you said the template started on that note. I moved from Geneva to Munich and then from Munich to Vienna with ease crossing across three countries. And don't forget that the Schengen visa allows you the opportunity to be able to travel over 20 countries where you, once you enter a member country. So how easy it is. I know a couple of friends who could not go to South Africa from Nigeria. And I know a colleague of mine that is a South African that could not come to Nigeria. It was that difficult in terms of processing um, um, travel documents between Nigeria and South Africa. Despite years of bilateral engagement, bilateral signing of documents that is supposed to ease this movement. So I think to the extent to which we have not been able to address the core issues of integration within the continent, I don't see this currency unification coming to fruition um, in the foreseeable three to four, five years. And I'm not an optimist. I'm just talking based on the evidence that is on ground right now. And then the, the, the last thing that I'm going to mention is the issue of um, free movement of persons, which um, um, attached to the AFCTA. So to what extent are people able to move from one country to another within the continent? Even people that are coming to our continent, it's very difficult. And don't forget that when we talk about this thing, we are going to tie it to the issue of foreign direct investment. So, for instance, I mentioned the issue of Schengen visa. We don't have that regional coordination that allows foreigners to say, once I enter Nigeria, I will be able to move around and the remaining 15 ECOWAS country. That single, I mean, that common entry, regional common entry doesn't exist. It's not existing in Southern Africa. It's not existing in Eastern Africa. It's not existing in Northern Africa. It's not existing in Central and West Africa. 
So that is a very difficult thing to handle in the first, I mean, in the first place. The second thing is even when you talk about uh, maybe move, I mean, um, ease, I mean, integration of air travel within the continent is also a very difficult thing. If you want to move, I, I will cite an example. For I mean, somebody that traveled with me in Cameroon when I moved around in Central Africa early this year was traveling to Gabon with me. And then going back to Yahunde, he needed to come to Togo with uh, Askai before he would go to Yahunde. That is from Gabon. Gabon is just, I mean, a, 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 a neighboring country to Cameroon. Where does that happen in the world? 60 years, over 60 years after independence. There's no place that such happens. So to the extent to which we don't address these critical issues that I've I, I, I highlighted, I don't see the common currency idea coming into fruition soon. And the last thing that I'm going to hanker on is that it is deeply a political thing. And the political will do not exist on the part of heads of nations, I mean heads of states, to really move in that direction. If it is truly something that they are committed to, it will have been evident in other, in, in, in other um, integration documents or plans that we have on the continent. The same thing is affecting the FCTA now. I can bear it with you that for the next two years, we're still going to be talking about it. Afrique Media. Le monde, c'est nous.